tonight how the university plans to clean up the LSU lakes. And why students might have a hard time traveling back home this week. Newsbeat starts right now. Tigers, I'm Jackie Massey. And I'm Michael Edmondson. Thanks for tuning in tonight. The student government debate is next Thursday in the Holiday Forum. Tiger TV will be broadcasting the event live at TigerTV.tv. The candidates for the president and vice president are Andrew Matuk and Hannah Knight with the Here and Now, David Scotton and Moa Sean with the More for LSU, and Helen Frigg and Wesley Davis with Make It Matter campaign. Budget cuts have been a major topic within the LSU community. Larissa Bonacista tells us how one student government ticket decided to take their concern to the Capitol steps last Friday. This morning, the More for LSU student government ticket stood on the front steps of the Capitol and protested the impending budget cuts on higher education. Over the past two weeks, More for LSU collected over 1,000 signatures from students across campus on a petition calling for a constitutional amendment to protect higher education from budget cuts. Due to the fact that Governor Jindal will present his proposal to lawmakers in one week, the ticket hopes to capture the attention of Governor Jindal and the legislature with this petition. Our short-term plan is to cut internal wasteful spending from student government, give it back in scholarships. That's how we're going to temporarily leave this, this problem. Our long-term solution is a constitutionally protect higher education. This has been Larissa Bonacquisti reporting for Tiger TV News. Students will get a chance to vote for student government on March 9th. Crews are getting ready for a winter mix of snow and rain for Louisiana. Southeast Louisiana is expected to get freezing rain while the northern part of the state will get the worst of the weather. The Monroe Department of Transportation is preparing salt trucks and are covering the roads. The DOT has 3,000 pounds of salt, the roads and 1 million pounds of salt across nine northern parishes. If you are a student traveling home this week, make sure you check the conditions before heading out on the road. Many nearby parishes, like East Feliciana, canceled school today. The DOTD are focusing on, the salt, on salting main roads and elevated structures, such as bridges and overpasses. Well, the rumors are true. The LSU lakes are getting a facelift. Reporter Jordan Mashita shows us what this could look like and what it means for Lakeshore residents. A master plan to save the LSU lakes is underway, and saving the lakes could mean draining them. But what does this mean to those living near the water? And are the ecological and aesthetic wants of Baton Rougeans worth it? Uh, it may be an eyesore, it may present even a problem with odor, but I'd be very willing to put up with that consequence. LSU professor of hydrology and water resources June Shu says although draining the lakes is an option, he has some other ideas in mind. The, the lake needs to be uh, refreshed, sort, sort of. What I'm proposing is to have a more sustainable and more longer term solution to this lake. Shu's approach for cleaning out the water includes a gate system that would allow water to rush out underneath, separating the water from the sediments. The president of the Lakeshore Civic Association, George Baihe, can call the lakes his front yard and says draining the water could be a necessary evil. Personally, I don't have a problem if it's in the best interest of getting the job accomplished. Even with the support of the residents, cleaning the water could still present a problem in terms of the cost. Shu says what this all comes down to is funding and more funding. People talk all the time about how important this lake is, but in reality, not many people really care. So it's ultimately a choice of citizens in this city, in this community. This is Jordan Mashida with Tiger TV. Campus officials are working with the Baton Rouge Area Foundation to come to a suitable solution. Now, Kristen Berta will tell us what we can expect with this week's weather update. Please tell us when this weather will be gone, the cold weather. I know. Ready for some Louisiana weather? Hey, Tigers. I hope you are all able to keep warm somehow on this cold Tuesday. Tonight, temperature is going to stay in the low 40s, but the 70% chance of humidity rate is going to make it feel much colder. Tonight, you can expect some light winds and prepare to stay inside if you can because there's going to be an 80% chance of rain. 
and it looks like it's gonna this rain is gonna carry into Wednesday. As you can see, there's gonna be a 100% chance of rain and a high humidity rate at 80%. The highs for tomorrow are going to be in the upper 40s and the lows will be around 30 degrees. For this Thursday, it's going to warm up slightly during the day and you can expect to see temperatures rise to the mid 50s and there's only going to be a 10% chance of rain. As the day goes on, temperatures will drop back down to the 30s. So you definitely will keep those jackets handy. That's all I have for you to now. For, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. Keep, <laughs> keep watching see if there's any snow days in store for you this week. Up next, sports reporter Cody Krupp will let us know what's up to date with everything in Tiger sports. We'll be right back. I mean, he was, he was really mad. <laughs> i just put it that way, but understandably so. Like we were too. I mean, it was, it was probably the worst uh, post-game um, locker room experience I've had this year. Just under three weeks ago, a struggling Auburn Tigers team led by Bruce Pearl, came into the PMAC and upset LSU. The setback left an angry coach, Johnny Jones, as well as a frustrated fan base, losing hope of seeing the Tigers dancing in March. Following the loss, the Tigers came out motivated. A strong victory against Alabama and a tough last-second loss to still undefeated Kentucky, which brought back hope of March Madness for LSU fans across the country. Now the Tigers sit at 19-8 overall and considered a bubble team by many experts. And with four games remaining, LSU cannot afford a loss when they tip off in Auburn, Alabama for a chance at redemption in just near 50 minutes from now. A 6 p.m. tip off and the Tigers will look to earn their seventh road win of the season and their second consecutive 20 win season. If Terrell Martin and company look to get it done, they will need to slow down KT Harrell and Antoine Mason. As in game one, the two combined for 42 out of the 81 points for Auburn in their four point victory. The loss forced Johnny Jones to change his lineup, looking for a spark. And now, three weeks later, it's do or die, and the pressure is on. They still shoot the ball well. They shot it well against Kentucky, especially in the uh, second half. They made shots. They made shots against Alabama. Uh, but both teams were able to overcome that, you know, because of their ability to score. Uh, we scored 77 points. That's a lot of points uh, for us to score. We just have to make sure we defend and hold our opponent below that number. Here's a look at the remaining schedule for LSU after tonight. Saturday, Ole Miss comes to town for a battle of two teams tied for fourth and could be a deciding game in the eyes of many. Joe Minardi still has the Tigers in the field of 64 in the 11th spot. When many fans think of Alabama versus LSU, first thought is likely Nick Saban versus Les Miles roaming the sidelines on a Saturday night in Death Valley or in front of 100,000 plus singing Sweet Home Alabama in Tuscaloosa. But on Friday night, goal posts will become balance beams as the Tide versus the Tigers battle in gymnastics. LSU will leave their 12,200 fans and the friendly confines of the PMAC and travel the six-hour trip to take on the Crimson Tide, ranked fifth in the country. LSU jumped back to second following Friday night's victory over the then second-ranked Gators. And all that will be on the mind this week for the gymnasts will be how sweet it will be to be Alabama. We kind of encourage our kids to, to, to feel like that crowd's cheering for you, feel like that crowd is, is for you the, the, because you, you can't let it get in your head. The pride they take in their program, just as we do, um, is, an, is a really cool place to go to because the environment's always really exciting and we can kind of make the crowd our own. I'm excited to get into their environment and just um, really bleed purple all over the floor. It's greater than, you know, beating. It's more like being superior. We would love to beat Alabama. I want to beat Alabama in, in the English department, you know. I want to beat Alabama in journalism. But um, if we can beat them in gymnastics, then that's a plus. Rain, rain, go away, come again another day. Or at least when baseball is not being played. That could be the problem tomorrow in Alex Box Stadium when Southeastern makes the trip down the I-10 to visit Baton Rouge. And if that is the case, the game will be rescheduled for Thursday night and will set up a four games and four day weekend, making it six out of seven by weekend's end. For Coach Maneri, he is confident in the depth of his pitching staff to handle the challenge. Once we get going, I mean, you know, you start to tax your bullpen a little bit more. You'd like to see your starters go deeper into the game. And I'd like to see it with us playing four, you know, if we end up playing four days in a row. 
that would be an important thing for some starters to go a little bit deeper into the game. Well, I know we just got this new jacket. Uh, you put it on, it's kind of like a heated blanket, so maybe that's going to be the key to staying warm. But uh, no, I mean, you just got to take it as it comes. I mean, weather weather's a huge pain, but um, as long as, you know, I got to stay, stay warm, run around, you know, stretch, put on my jacket. Coach Neri's squad was able to pick up a game or a win of their own as Cade Savik was chosen as a co-recipient for its weekly honors in, in, in Saturday's blowout victory over Boston College. The senior hit two out of the park as he improved his record to 500 on the season. Other LSU baseball news, Ford Jordan is expected to have surgery Thursday on his torn right meniscus in his knee and could miss the remainder of the season. And Andrew Stevenson will be back in the lineup Thursday after nursing a hamstring injury. The LSU softball team just arrived from sunny Palm Springs, California as they took part in the Mary Nutter Classic and they enjoyed more than just beaches and sunsets as now officially they hold the best start in program history, 16 straight games. LSU went 5-0 over the course of the three days with dominating victories over big names such as 13th ranked Arizona, Northwestern and Nebraska along the way outscoring their opponents 38-6 and three games ending in run rule before the conclusion. The Tigers put their perfect record on the line as this weekend they host the Purple and Gold Challenge right in Tiger Park, and they are ranked 14th right now, but expected to jump in the newest rankings when they are released later this week. A big reason for that start has been slugger Savannah Jaquis, as that has earned her SEC Player of the Week honors for the first time in her career, following a week that she went 500 from the plate. After a three-run walk-off homer the night before the team boarded the buses for California, she added three more over the trip to make it six already on the season and just one away from the team record. Well, that is all the time I have today for sports, but don't you worry, we'll have more news be coming your way after the break. Welcome back. The extension process started in November when LSU submitted in the National Panhellenic Conference Bulletin that informed all national PHC organizations that, were, that are open for extension. Alpha Delta Pi, Gamma Phi Beta, and Alpha Chi Omega are in the running to reach LSU's campus. LSU invited these interested organizations to campus for presentations. The Extension Committee discusses and votes on which organization they want to invite on campus by November 1st. Fall of 2016, our members going through formal recruitment can now look forward to a new organization and new opportunity. Around the fall of 2016, the new organization will be officially installed to be a chapter here at LSU. Dance Marathon is only four days away, so if you haven't signed up, now is the time. To become a dancer, you will commit to dance for about 26 hours and raise $250 to fundraise for Our Lady of the Lake Children's Miracle Network Hospital. If you want to donate but not dance, you can visit the Dance Marathon website, dancemarathon at lsu.wordpress.com, to safely give your tax-deductible donation. The big event takes place at 8 p.m. in the Parker Coliseum this Friday. For more information, feel free to email your questions to dancemarathon at lsu.edu. Hope to see you out there dancing with me. After the break, what some viewers thought about a missing tribute at the Academy Awards. And the reaction to the Muslim hate crime in North Carolina. Movie fans are upset after the In Memoriam segment at the Oscars Sunday night. The segment featured and honored those active in the film industry that passed away in 2014. Comedian Joan Rivers did not make the cut and fan went, fans went to social media sites to vent. Rivers was frequently on the Oscar red carpet and appeared in several films in her early career. Other notable people missing from the segment include Elaine Stitch, Richard Keel, and Taylor Negron. The recent Chapel Hill shooting was was created controversy in America. Tiger TV reporter Keir Shooty looks into how these shootings have changed the community at LSU. The fact that uh, my friend, when she said, when I heard about it, I thought of you, like it could happen to any of us. Emotions ran high Saturday night in the Atchafalaya room when members of the LSU community gathered to honor the lives of three Muslim students shot at Chapel Hill earlier this month. Dia, you know, he started the Syrian uh, relief where he started raising money for Syria sending medical supplies. That is something you should remember about him. Talk about his wife, Yosa. She got accepted to dental school. Remember that. She wanted to give back to the community herself. Look at Rezan. She was an architect major, freshman, about to start her life. Members of the Muslim community believe that Americans are using the recent attacks by ISIS to judge the Islamic faith. We want people to see that we are not identified by what ISIS is or what's going on over there. We are American Muslims 
living in America and we just want to be treated equally. Everybody wants to be treated equally. While there is debate over whether or not these shootings were a hate crime or a result of mental illness, attendees of the vigil reminded students that this type of violence is happening around the world. The hatred is spread all around the world for every, um, for every different person. So we are not targets. We're not targets. Everybody is a target. Members at the event use this as an opportunity to promote activism. What we can take away from this event is to stress that we can't be selective activists. Because we don't, you know, I'm, I'm not someone who practices Islam, but that does not mean that I should stop being an activist when I see injustice. This is Kira Shooty with Tiger TV. Craig Stephen Hicks has been charged with three counts of first degree murder for these shootings. <clears throat> After the break, Christian Bertel will fill us in on the weekend forecast. And I'll update you on what's going on in Louisiana politics this month. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Tigers. Kristen Bertel will now fill us in on what we can expect for the weekend for Christ. Kristen? Welcome back to the weather. So far this week has been freezing, but sadly you won't be seeing any snow this week. What you can expect to see this week is a lot of cold nights and mornings with temperatures ranging from 30 to 40 degrees and some cloudy rainy afternoons with temperatures around the upper 40s and mid 50s. This Friday and Saturday should be the nicest days this week with mostly sunny skies and little to no chance of rain. You can expect to see a little warmer temperatures in the 50s and 60s again, so those will be your ideal days for walking around campus. Temperatures are finally going to get back into the 70s that we love come Sunday and Monday. However, if you're looking to wear shorts, you may want to wear an umbrella if, if you're going, because there's going to be an 80% chance of rain Sunday and a 40% chance for Monday. That's all the weather I have for you today. Try and keep warm and stay out of the rain tonight, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and back to you, Jackie. Thanks, Kristen. Hello. Welcome back to your weekly political update. This year, Bobby Jindal will not run for governor because of his term limits. The question is, who will? The only Democratic candidate running so far is Representative John Bell Edwards from Louisiana. Some Democrats think that New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu will decide to run. He's not announced if he's running yet, but still it's time to decide. The last date to file for the governor election is on September 10th. Several Republican candidates like U.S. Senator David Vitter, Public Service Commissioner Scott Angel, and Lieutenant Governor Jay Darden are already committed to the race. Angel is actually the first candidate to air a political ad on TV. He spent $200,000 on an ad in Lake Charles, Homa, Lafayette, and Alexandria. His ad focuses on the campaign theme of being a workhorse and not a show horse. These ads aren't going to go away, ladies and gentlemen, because the election is on October 24th. Speaking of elections and governors, Bobby Jindal defended Barack Obama after New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani said the president did not love his country. I think the mayor should have used different words to express what he wanted to say. Uh, I didn't want to throw him under the bus. I, I know the media loves to see Republicans attacking other Republicans. Uh, the president loves America. He loves our, our country. Uh, there, there's no doubt about that. He defended the president again after the governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker, said Obama was not Christian. Chindle says the president's Christian values aren't the issue. Instead, he says he's worried about what Obama has done to religion in America. Chindle still has not announced if he is running for president. I am so anxious to find out. That's all I have for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Thousands of people faced the cold this weekend to ring in the Chinese New Year in New York City. The Flushing region of City House is the largest Chinese and East Asian populations in that area. The parade featured music, dancing, and the traditional dragon dance. The Lunar New Year celebration takes place over 15 days. Parade goers were out in temperatures as low as the 20s, but said their excitement is what kept them warm. Depending on the translation, this is the year or the sheep, ram, or goat. Thanks for watching tonight, Tigers. Don't forget to tune in next Thursday at 6 p.m. for our student government specialty show, and the debate begins at 6.30. Have a good night.